you haven't been able to figure out what went wrong by now, basically as soon as you wake up in the hospital after talking to Lucifer, the game freezes. That's right, a game-breaking bug that I didn't encounter until the very end of the game. It's unfortunate, but with these unofficial fan-made patches, it's not uncommon, and considering that this patch hasn't been updated in two years, it probably won't ever be fixed. At this point, I didn't know what to think. Was this the end of the challenge? I was seething at the thought of having to stop my playthrough due to some undetected bug. I mean, yeah, I could do one of the normal endings, but that would make all the hard work I put into defeating the fiends and clearing the Kalpas pointless. Well, in my desperation for a solution, I did a bit of digging and I actually found a workaround that I honestly did not expect to work. Here's what you do. You load up the ISO file for the official US version, you know, the one with Dante, and get this. Your save files for the Maniacs version? Work. That's right. Everything is the same except Raido is now replaced with Dante. I have no idea how this was possible, but I ain't complaining. So what you do now is you wake up back in the hospital, this time without the freeze, go save your game at the nearest terminal, close the game, open the Chronicles version, open your save, and BAM! The game is working again. What a relief. Huge shout out to T4Chan who figured this out and posted it on Reddit. Kagutsuchi, bless you. So, now that everything is back to normal again, you might notice that our first Magatama has a new skill. That skill is Pierce. Anyone familiar with Megaton should know what Pierce does. It makes the user's physical attacks ignore all the enemy's resistances except for Repel. This is going to be absolutely necessary for the late game boss fights. Now, before I move on to the final dungeon, I do have a few things left to do, those things being that I need to get all the Magatamas that I don't already have, for reasons you'll find out soon enough. Thankfully, most of them I just need to buy, but there is one that requires me to fight some optional bosses that I missed, and the last one requires me to beat the puzzle minigame. Once I get those, I'm done, and now it's time to head to the final dungeon, the Tower of Kagetsuchi. But first, I go through the back entrance of the obelisk. Why? Because down here, I get the Chakra Elixir. It's an infinite use item that restores MP. Once I get that, it is now time to head to the Tower of Kagetsuchi. This is it, everybody. We're in the final stretch of the game. Now, as expected, the enemies here are extremely high level. Because of that, I level up pretty quickly. Demifiend and Raido both learn their peer skills before long, and once I'm level 78, I'm able to fuse the strongest demon in the game. That demon is Surt. Why is he so strong, you ask? Well, his normal attack is fire type, meaning it can be boosted by fire boost, but because it's still a physical attack, it can also be enhanced by focus and critical hits. So I give him Fire Boost, Bright Might and Dark Might, and Ice Drain to cover his weakness. Now, Kagatsuchi's Tower is the biggest dungeon in the game. It's divided into three segments, and there are four major boss battles, three of which to represent the reasons. Though, thankfully the puzzles are pretty easy, and there's not much to do other than keep progressing. After a while, we get to the first boss, Hikawa's Reason boss, Ahriman. So, just like all the other Reason boss fights, this fight has a gimmick. At the start of the fight, he'll ban certain types of moves. If you use one of those banned moves, you die. Basically, as long as you don't mess up, this part is a piece of cake. He starts by banning physical skills, so I use this chance to focus. The next turn, he bans magic, so I attack, and oh man, in this fight, Surt is an absolute monster. His normal attack is doing around 1300 damage after focus, and Demifiend is doing about the same amount with Spiral Viper. I use Mother Harlot as my healer, with Black Frost just attacking with Bright Might. After putting down a few more rules that don't prevent me from attacking, he just says screw it, switches forms, and now we can fight him normally. Now, at first I was expecting the fight to be easy, but things quickly take a nosedive once he starts attacking. Aramon's physical attack hits like a freight train. A single normal attack does 500 damage to Demifiend and Sir. Whenever he does this, all I can hope is that he hits Mother Harlot. And on top of that, he has a skill called Tentacle, which is another physical skill that hits random targets, and it does over 800 damage. That's more than enough to kill Surt in one hit. But his most deadly attack by far is Apocalypse. Once he goes for this, it absolutely destroys my party, killing most of my party members and bringing Demifiend and Mother Harlot down to extremely low health. Oh yeah, and aside from Dekunda, Dekaja, and Megidolon, these are the only attacks he has. That's right, no elemental attacks for me to take away his press turns with, just physical and almighty attacks. 
At this point, it becomes clear that I can't beat him with my current party, so I'm gonna have to rethink my strategy. What I do is I grind up to level 80 so that I can now fuse my Super Pixie with Mitamas. I give her Bright Might, Life Surge, and Life Gain, which brings her health up to 990. My strategy now is that I'll just hold out as long as possible while doing as much damage as I can with Sir, Mother Harlot, and Black Frost, and then once any of them die, I'll bring out Pixie and whoever else I have left. I'm still not entirely sure how much damage Apocalypse does, but at least my party members with over 900 HP can survive Tentacle. In the next attempt, he uses Apocalypse, followed by Megidolon, so no matter how much HP I have, there's literally nothing I can do about that, so he kills me. I attempt like three times after this, and after continually getting Megido Apocalypse, I'm about ready to give up, but in the fourth one, I win the lottery. He keeps going for his normal attack on Mother Harlot most of the fight, which is just what I need. And when he uses Tentacle, it misses Sir. He's only able to use Apocalypse once at the end of the fight, and sadly, when he does, it does kill Sirt, but Demifiend, Mother Harlot, and Pixie are left standing thanks to Endure. At this point, he's already in his low health animation, so I know he's close to death. I don't bother summoning Rido, and I make sure to fully heal just in case, but as it turns out, I don't need it, as in the last moment of the fight, with a stroke of luck, Demifiend lands the final Spiral Viper, and Ahriman goes down. That is without doubt the luckiest I've gotten in this entire game. One more turn and I would have died, and if I hadn't killed him in that attempt, I probably would have given up, but for right now, we can live to fight another day without buffing. Anyway, that's one boss down, but I've still got three more to go. The next one is Isamu's Reason boss. Just like Aramon, this boss starts off really easy, but then gets... I don't want to say hard, but just really, really tedious. Once Isamu casts Aurora, his affinities change, and when he does this, he reflects everything except for a quote-unquote weakness, which I put in quotes because it's not actually a weakness, it's just something that he doesn't reflect. It's basically like him changing his type, and you have to hit him with the opposite of whatever element he uses. For example, when he uses Miragi Dime, that means his weakness is ice, and vice versa. It's the same with wind and electricity. Another issue is that he doesn't always go for an elemental attack, but he does rotate his affinities in the same order, so you kind of have to keep track of that order. The order of the weaknesses is ice, fire, electricity, and wind. The thing about this fight is that Isamu isn't very strong, but the fact that I can only do so little damage to him every turn just makes things really tedious, and the fight goes on much longer than it needs to, as I can pretty much only damage him when he has his fire weakness. Thankfully, most turns he'll go for elemental attacks, which don't do anything because of our resistances, at least for the first part of the fight. During this part, it may seem like everything is going fine, but once he gets below half help, he'll start casting a move called Domination, which is basically meditation on super steroids. It drains HP and MP, and it generally does at least 800 damage. If Sirt or Mother Harlot are hit by that, they're dead, but the worst part is that this also gets him his health back. Keep in mind that I'm only able to do any real damage when he's weak to fire, and maybe a few hundred when he's weak to electricity. So, the average damage I can do to him about every turn is 350, so that's three turns of health he gets back in just one move. And I'm not entirely sure how the AI works either. Sometimes he barely uses it, and sometimes he spams it. But either way, with this move, we're not doing enough damage to make up for it. This is one of those fights like Trumpeter, where it beats you not by killing you, but making you want to rage quit. And it works. After two really long attempts and getting spammed with domination, I just give up. But before resorting to buffs, I'm gonna try changing my party a little. What I do is I fuse two magic-focused demons, Yerlunger and Titania. Both these demons have life surge and life gain, while Yerlunger has Bolt Storm and Prominence, and Titania has Glacial Blast and Wind Cutter. With this team, I should be doing more damage every turn, and hopefully more than he can to me. But my attempts after this don't go very well. I keep getting only one hit with the multi-target magic attacks, and I just can't deal enough damage to make up for domination. 
It gets to the point where I'm just swapping your longer with Surt when he's about to switch to fire because at least with him I can do decent damage, but if he uses domination on Surt, I'm screwed. Now some of you might be thinking, well why not just use almighty attacks? And this is because he also has an almighty resistance. I'm not entirely sure what the resistance is, but it can't be any less than 75%, and it's really not enough damage to rely on. If only I had Frey Kugel on Demifiend, then I'd be able to pierce that resistance, and this fight would be so much easier. The moment that thought went through my head, I remembered something. Raido has an almighty physical move called Tegisatsu, and he also has Pierce. I immediately bring out Raido and start spamming Tegisatsu, and with it, he starts doing over 400 damage with every attack. This is an absolute godsend, though the downside is that he's still vulnerable to domination, but at least he has Endure. Thankfully, Isamu only seems to go for domination a few times after this. With Raido hitting him with Tekisatsu every turn and Surt attacking whenever he can, this fight goes smoothly. Eventually, I bring him into his low health animation, and not long after that, he goes down. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully beat Isamu without buffs, and can now move on to the next area. Now, one thing that's cool about this next area is that it's basically a town. There's a terminal, a fountain, a cathedral, and even a shop in which shop they sell the Kailash Magatama. This is the Magatama that contains Frey Kugel, so it's definitely important. However, it costs 450,000 Maka. An amount that I'm not even close to, so I'm gonna have to grind. To help with this, I fuse Mata, who has the skill Threaten, which will let him demand something from demons that are 10 levels lower than him. And you usually get about 5,000 Maka each time, if you get Maka. Sometimes you just get a bunch of useless elemental stones. Not exactly the most effective strategy, but there's also an item in here called the Soul Return. It's an item that will fully revive allies and has infinite uses, but it can also be sold for 100,000 Maka. Keeping it is tempting, but my pixie does have Samari Karm, and I also have a decent number of Balms of Rising, so against my better judgment, I'm gonna sell it. Once I buy it, I now have every Magatama in the game. Now, do you remember why I needed all those Magatama from earlier? Well, once you get all the Magatama, it allows you to get the Masakados Magatama, which is the best Magatama in the game, and one that we're definitely going to need. Once you get them all, go into the Cathedral of Shadows and the Minister will give you the Lord's Sword. Take this to Masakados Grave, and it'll open up the Bondo Shrine where you fight the four Devas. These bosses are all extremely easy as long as you block the element that they specialize in. They just have a whole lot of health, so they take forever to beat. Once you beat them, Masakado comes down and gives you the Masakados Magatama. What this Magatama does is it nulls everything except Almighty and gives you plus 10 to every stat except for luck. This is going to be an absolute game changer for the upcoming bosses. Now, before going back to fight Chiaki, I do fuse some more demons. I fuse Trumpeter and a new and improved Mother Harlot, this time with Life Surge and Life Gain. After going back through the dungeon, we finally reach Chiaki. And thanks to my new team, this fight is a complete joke. The reason I made my party like this is because her signature move is Bale's Vein, which turns the target into a fly. The only way to counter this is to Null Curse, which is exactly what my party does. Other than that, the gimmick of this fight is that she summons two minions, Floros and Osei Halel, and then gets fully healed once she brings them out, so don't waste too much MP trying to damage her. After she summons the minions, don't waste your time attacking Chiaki. Make sure you take out the minions first, starting with Osei. The reason you should prioritize him is because he likes to use Dragon Eye. And then, after that, make sure you take out Floros next. Floros likes to use buff, so it's not as much of a priority as Osei, but make sure you still get rid of him before fighting Chiaki again. Though, that being said, even with the minions, this fight isn't that hard, and once the two minions are done, the fight is pretty much over. I honestly could probably just use Auto Battle to finish it. I mean, Chiaki's only moves are the aforementioned Bale's Vein, which doesn't do anything, Holy Wrath, which doesn't do anything, 
attack, which only does damage to Trumpeter and Rido, and Megidola, which barely puts a dent in the party. My strategy for this fight is just attack, 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 and then heal with Mother Harlot whenever I need to. She also has the least amount of HP of the Reason bosses, and she also has no resistances, so just go crazy and hit her with whatever you got. After a whole lot of Spiral Vipers and attacks from my demons, Chiaki goes down. You gotta love how they made the easiest boss the one at the end. And that is it for the Reason bosses. Now, there is only one boss left in this dungeon, Kagutsuchi himself. We go up the elevator, and on the 666th floor, there he is. But first, I'm gonna do a little bit of grinding, because Demifiend still doesn't have Frey Kugel yet, which I kinda need. Once I get that though, I think we're ready. We go up the elevator, save at the terminal, and then make our way to him. Well guys, it's been a long road, but now, only two more bosses stand in our way. We put the stones in the pillars, ride the elevator up, and come face to face with Kagotsuchi himself. And after some dialogue, the fight begins. So, Kagotsuchi has two forms, the first one being this disco ball form. Now, what makes this fight unique is that the phases are constantly changing, so you can't really rely on Dark Might or Bright Might for it. But other than that, it just plays like any other boss. He has all elemental attacks in Megidola. His elemental attacks we just eat up along with his turns, and Megidola hardly does anything. He also has a skill called Phase Shift, which makes the Kagutsuchi phase jump ahead by two phases. Why does this matter? Well, once the phase becomes full, that's when it hits the fan. During a full phase, and a full phase only, Kagutsuchi can use a skill called Vast Light. This is an almighty attack that does an insane amount of damage to the party, usually over 900. I'm able to survive thanks to Endure, but I'm not going to be able to take two of those hits in one battle, not with the amount of HP I have. So after getting killed by the second hit of it, I go back to the Cathedral of Shadows to readjust my party. By using a whole bunch of Kusi Mitama fusions, I increase my demons' vitality so that they all have at least 950 HP. And I also fuse a new Cert, this time with Life Surge and Life Gain. Once I have everybody ready, it's time to try again. So, this attempt goes pretty much the same as our first attempt, but now we're able to survive Vast Light. It does do around 900 damage, so we're just barely able to survive, but as long as we're still alive, we can still fight. Now, this form of Kagutsuchi has about 20,000 HP. Once you beat it, and it's really not that hard, he goes into his face form, which is pretty much the same as his Disco Ball form, except he now has Dragon Eye, 40,000 HP, and in this phase, the moon is always full. This actually works in our favor because Cert has Bright Might, he can now get a critical hit every turn. With Demifiend using Focused Frey Kugel and Cert attacking, I'm able to deal about 2,000 damage per turn. And when Kagutsuchi attacks, he just uses elemental attacks that cost him his turns. So, so far the fight goes well, but then he pulls out his trump card, the skill Infinite Light. It's basically Vast Light on steroids, and now because the moon is always full, he can do it whenever he wants. When he uses it the first time, it immediately sends everyone into 1 HP because of Endure. I don't know how much damage that did, but I keep fighting anyway, and only a couple of turns later, he goes for it again, and it does over 1600 damage to my party. I just... I, I, I don't know what to say, but... I have a bad feeling that I'm not going to be able to squeeze my way out of this one. I attempt the fight a couple more times to see if maybe I just got unlucky, and the same thing happens. He still does almost enough damage to kill me twice, and there's nothing I can do. There's really nothing for me left to do. I mean, it's an almighty attack, so I can't block it. I can't increase my health anymore because it's capped at 999, and my vitality is also maxed out. I... I'm at a loss for words, guys. I... there's really nothing I can do. All I can say is... Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is not possible to beat Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne without buffs and debuffs. At least not on hard mode if you're going for the true demon ending. I suppose you can say it's possible if you're going for the normal demon ending, because in that one you don't fight Kagutsuchi, 
but as far as this run is concerned, there's nothing we can do. This no buff challenge is impossible. I'm sure some of you are disappointed because I didn't beat the game like this, but even though I failed the challenge, I'm not going to stop playing here, and even if I can't beat the game without buffs and debuffs, I'm still going to try to see if I can half complete the challenge by beating the game using just debuffs. My cert has Warcry, which lowers attack by two stages, so I'm going to see if I can beat this boss using only that. Then I'm going to see if I can beat Lucifer without buffs or debuffs at all. So right off the bat, I minimize Kagutsuchi's attack with two war cries, and he doesn't seem to go for Dekunda. When he uses Vast Light, it does around 400, so we can take that with plenty of health left over. Once we beat his Disco Ball form and get to his face, we're just barely able to survive Infinite Light with it doing around 800 damage at minimum attack. Still though, it doesn't kill us, and that's what's important. Now, because I don't have any defense debuffs, I'm still doing the same amount I was before, which is around 2,000 damage per turn. But even then, this fight is over before I even know it. It's kind of hard to believe that a boss that I literally could not beat is made so easy because of a single move. But once you beat Kagetsuchi, it's not over yet. We're doing the true demon ending, so there is one more boss. Debatably the hardest final boss in all of Megaton, Lucifer. And even though I already failed the no buff and no debuff challenge when I used Warcry against Kagutsuchi, I'm still going to see if I can beat Lucifer without using buffs or debuffs at all, even though I'm not expecting to. Now, before I talk about the gameplay of this fight, I just want to say that the atmosphere for this fight is awesome. The dark lighting, the background, the music, the fact that it says dead for the Kagutsuchi phase. This atmosphere just really makes you feel hopeless, and the whole time I just imagine Demifiend thinking, what have I done? And just look at Lucifer. Look at how huge this man is. But now on to the actual fight. Okay, so first of all, Lucifer resists everything in the game. Literally everything, including Almighty. In order to damage him, you need Pierce, and the only ones that have Pierce are Demifiend and Rido. Now, it actually is possible to get a demon with Pierce, but it's really not worth the trouble if you ask me. Remember those doors in the 5th Kalpa I mentioned earlier that I couldn't open because they require Beelzebub and Metatron? Well, behind one of those doors is a shady broker that'll sell you a Gear Macala for 200,000 Maka, and it has Pierce. So by doing this, it is possible to get a demon with Pierce, which will be helpful during this boss fight, but Demifiend is going to be doing most of the work anyway, and my demons are just going to be there for support. And not to mention, grinding up to level 95 in this game is just a long and tedious process, and I really just don't think it's worth it. So my strategy for the fight is focus and fray Kugel with Demi Fiend, heal with Mother Harlot, pass turns with Surt, and use Yoshitsune with Raido, which, let me tell you, looks freaking cool in this battle. Although, why is Raido hitting him in that area? Although, that's enough about his resistances. What makes this fight so hard, though, are his offensive capabilities. Now, at first, Lucifer may not seem so bad. Like any other boss, he does have elemental attacks, but only fire and ice, which makes him lose his turns. He also has a unique skill called Evil Gleam, which deals mind damage and might charm, but to my party, it does absolutely nothing. This is what he does for the first part of the match, and even Megidola hardly does anything. But this starts to change when he gets low enough and starts using High King. High King is a heavy almighty attack that is guaranteed to bind any target it hits. Again, that's not a problem for us because we null all ailments, but the damage it deals is almost enough to kill us, dealing around 800 damage. However, because he gets two turns, double High King or Megi Dolan High King can easily kill us. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that High King can't miss. Once he starts getting real low, he'll start using a skill called Root of Evil, which does one of six things to each party member. It'll either reduce their HP by 50%, 75%, or 90%, or inflict Mute, Poison, or Stun. I mean, I think it goes without saying, but Ailment Resistance is absolutely essential for this fight. So, I've said all these things about the different offensive attacks he has, but do you want to know what his most dangerous attack is? Do you really want to know? It's his normal attack. That's right, it's Almighty type, it's almost a guaranteed critical hit, and he always seems to target the party member that's the most vulnerable to it. Oh, and I've also never seen anybody in my party dodge it. I don't know for sure if it's impossible to dodge, but I've never seen this attack not hit, so I can only guess that they never miss. 
but yeah, this first attempt doesn't go very well. He eventually starts killing off my party members, and then it gets to the point where it's just a 1v1 between him and Demifiend, and then he kills Demifiend with a hiking followed by a normal attack. So yeah, I do attempt him one more time without debuffing, but after that, I give up. I mean, maybe it is possible to beat Lucifer without buffs and debuffs if you just get real lucky, because it's not like Kagutsuchi where he uses an attack that's literally impossible to survive, but this fight just goes on for too long. You know how the bosses in this game are either kill or be killed or just beat you by making you impatient? Well, Lucifer is a combination of both, and trying to keep playing until you're lucky enough to survive all of his attacks without debuffing is something even I don't have the patience for. And besides, I already failed the challenge when I had to use debuffs on Kagutsuchi, so it's not like it would even matter. So, anyway, the fight does go okay, better than I would have thought at least, but once I start to get him kinda low, the worst possible thing happens. Lucifer uses Diaran. He just fully healed himself. I don't remember him doing this the last time I played this game. Guess what? There's one other change exclusive to this version that wasn't in the original. Once you get Lucifer's HP low enough, he'll cast Diaran once, and you basically have to start the battle over. Keep in mind that this boss has over 65,000 HP, and according to the Megaton Wiki, he uses this move after he's taken around 40,000 damage. So, given this healing, you have to deal over 100,000 damage to beat him. Like, why? Was it not bad enough that this is one of the hardest and longest boss fights in the game? Who at Atlas was like, Heh, you know what would be funny is if we made it so that Lucifer heals himself when you're almost done with him, so now the player has to hold out even longer. A-holes. So yeah, this doesn't really add any real difficulty to the fight, it just means we gotta survive longer. After he kills me in this attempt, I realize that in order to stand a chance, I'm gonna need better demons and more debuffs. So I load my last save, go to the Cathedral, and fuse a Mata. Mata gets up to 999 HP with Life Gain and Life Surge, and he also has Debilitate, which debuffs all stats once. Even though he has this, I also give him Warcry just to be safe. And he also has Sukukaja, which I might use if I need it, but for now I'm still going to see if I can beat Lucifer using just debuffs. I also grind Demi Fiend up a level and use the Hifumi Magatama to teach him Warcry, so that way I always have at least one party member that can debuff. And with that, I think I'm good to fight Lucifer again. Unfortunately, because I loaded my last save and not a save state, I now gotta fight Kagutsuchi again. Thankfully, now that I have Debilitate, this fight goes by much quicker. With his lower defense, I am able to do around 4,000 damage each turn. So, after absolutely mopping the floor with Kagutsuchi, it's time to attempt Lucifer again. So, this battle has to be one of the closest boss fights I've ever had in a Megaton game. I'm constantly getting lucky one moment, getting unlucky the next, and having to change my strategy to fit the situation. The team I go with at first is Demifiend as the attacker, Mother Harlot as the healer, Mata as the debuffer, and Raido as another attacker. The strategy is to get his attack all the way down with Warcry, start lowering his defense and agility with Debilitate, and just keep hanging with Frey Kugel and Yoshitsune while healing when needed. As usual, the first parts of the fight go smoothly. He uses elemental attacks that I block, doesn't land criticals very much with his attack, and doesn't manage to kill anybody. Once he starts to go for hiking though, he kills Raido pretty early, which isn't surprising since he's the only party member without 900 HP. So in his place, I bring out Trumpeter, and we just use him for Holy Melody and passing turns. Now, because I want to keep doing damage, I do revive Raido a couple times, and thankfully after he does get revived, he gets his Endure effect back, but in most cases, he's still pretty weak because of his lack of HP. There are also some parts of the battle where Lucifer starts using Dekunda followed by Hiking, which is the worst possible thing that can happen in this fight, because if he does it with Raido on the field, he's dead, but at least the others are able to survive. Whenever this happens while Trumpeter is active, I use this as an opportunity to get my MP back with Holy Melody, and you know, that's another major issue that comes up with this boss. I have to heal just about every turn, and Mother Harlot's prayer costs 50 MP. Thankfully I have several Soma Droplets and Chakra Pots, as well as the Chakra Elixir, but the Elixir only restores about 70 to 80 MP with each use, which gives me about 3 prayers for 2 uses. It's the same with Mata, with his Debilitate costing 50 MP as well. The fastest way to restore their MP is with Great Chakras and Beads of Life, but I only have a limited supply of those. 
there's also this one part of the fight where he's constantly using Dakuna and then attacking or using Hiking, and he starts killing my party members. During which situation, I debuff with Demi Fiend, heal, and then debuff again, and I keep doing this until he stops going for Dakuna and gives me a chance to revive my dead allies. Like I said, because this fight is so long, I constantly need to change my strategy to adapt to each situation, and it's constantly rotating between these situations. It's really hard to do damage when you're constantly struggling to stay alive, and I begin to wonder if I'll even have the patience for it. It doesn't help that he gets healed three quarters of the way through the fight as well. Toward the end, things really start to take a turn for the worst. After a chain of critical hits against Demi Fiend, he brings him down to his Endure, but then thankfully goes for Prominence, which Demi Fiend nulls. At this point, I know the battle is almost over, but I know I lucked out and I don't have any second chances. I need to finish him before he finishes me. Just when I think it's about to be over, I go for that last Frey Kugel and finish him off. I lean back in my chair, breathe a heavy sigh of relief, and then watch the cutscene. Lucifer talks to me about his plan, I watch the final cutscene with the demons, and then the credits roll. And now, I can officially say that I have completed Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. I may not have completed the challenge fully, but I did beat the game. So, there you have it guys, that is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Is it possible to beat Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne without buffs and debuffs? Eh, well, kinda? It's definitely not possible on hard mode if you're going for the true demon ending or any of the reason endings, but like I said, in the normal demon ending, you don't have to fight Kagutsuchi, so I suppose you can if you can count it. However, we did beat the final boss using only debuffs, so you can say that it is possible to beat the game without buffs, but not without debuffs. We may not have completed the original challenge, but at least we have completed it. Either way, I had a lot of fun attempting this challenge. It forced me to play the game in a way that most people wouldn't even think about. And you know what? We may not have beat the game fully, but we got all the way up to the final boss without having to resort to breaking the rules. And that is worth something, especially with a game some people can't even beat at all. Throughout this run, we had to come up with all kinds of new strategies and workarounds for the roadblocks, including one that didn't even have anything to do with the game itself. And it gave me an excuse to replay SMT Nocturne. SMT Nocturne really is a great game. For a PS2 game, it still looks good, the combat is really addictive, and it has a really interesting story. If you haven't played it, I can't recommend it enough, and I look forward to doing more of these videos in the future. In fact, I'm actually thinking about streaming a challenge run of another SMT game, which right now I'm thinking of either doing No Fusion of Devil Survivor or SMT4 Apocalypse. If I do end up doing this, I'll be streaming it on my second channel, so be sure to check that out as well. Anyways guys, that is it for the video. I want to give a huge shout out to my Ko-Fi supporters for this video. If you enjoy my content and want to support me, consider leaving a donation of just $3. It may only be a small amount, but it really helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. As usual, thank you all for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to check out my links in the description. And if you have any ideas for challenge runs of other Megami Tensei games, I would love to hear them. But until then, I will see you guys on the next video.